it's a skill issue. Okay, resource allocation uh -huh. is going to be very important here for game number two between the Yudu Red Giants as well as RSG Philippines. And that's something that we really need to play close, close attention to, right? And I don't know, in the early game, sure, I guess the Cho doesn't really have much to say, right? In order for him to try and put some pressure because he doesn't have that level four. But even then, actually, wait, Zekka seems to be all right. Oh, because maybe they're anticipating that Yudu Red Giants would go for the blue buff first. Mm -hmm. They wanted to try to go for it. I mean, you can already see Light just opening up the map. And this is what you do on Cho, right? Early on, you try your best to just be a nuisance because of your mobility and your pretty strong base damage. The fact that he went for Concussive Blast just, you know, pushes that agenda even more. He wants to deal damage and he gets a good Jeet Kune Do in, but Sekis on the Bane. Yep, he's clearing the lanes. He's clearing the jungle very, very fast. Let's see who gets this one. It's going to be Sekis with a Retribution. Oh, he actually retries for that. Very interesting. They're now rotating towards this top side. They want to punish this Harith even more already. Sorry to bad matchup here for Iman himself. I'm actually curious to see how he's able to make it out alive, right? Because Iman, sure, right? The burst is going to be there. In the early game, I don't think that the Harvest damage is going to be that big. Well, wait, 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 wait. Huge aggression coming in from Light. He doesn't actually connect it just yet. Pancake was still able to flicker out. But that's what I was worried about, right? Because Pancake... Not only does he have the damage, but he also has the ability to open up the map. And the lack of range from Amon is going to be severely punished. Mm -hmm. And RGPH understand that fact. They understand that the Melissa will have a better time in lane. That's why they're trying their best to send members up top to clear that uh, freeze going on. Yudu Red Giants, if they continue at this pace, are going to have gold control. But they will lack a little bit of this neutral objective control, which was why the Bane was picked up. Irad's already first here. Let's see if Sekas can make a miracle play, but with Light jumping in, there's no way. Retribution for Irad, clean. RGPH strikes first. Good try from Sekas, trying to alleviate that pressure coming in from Light as well. Don't know why Light was given once again his power hero in that show. But so far, things are looking a lot less aggressive here in the early game. And it's interesting, right? Because I thought that after level 4, a lot of action would happen. The action just simply can't happen right now. Uh, because both of the compositions were built to... Well, not both, but Yudu Red Giants mostly was built to kind of disengage with the Diggy. And now, when they go in like this, it's just going to be a time journey and a reset once again. Super Egg clears out the wave, but Iman's doing pretty well in this lane, clearing out minions and farming. Hmm. Two minutes in, three minutes in. Only a small gold lead for RSG. It looks like Light is going to look for an end gauge here on to Super Red, but he, he was still able to recall. Giving a lot more information perhaps for Irad in his rotations. But look at Joy here. Very, very aggressive stance, trying to cut those waves. And I don't think at this point he can be punished yet. No, both Masha and Joy, it's kind of a dead lane here. They're just both going to be clearing each other's lanes. Not much kill threat from both. I don't think uh, Nath can really even pressure or threaten a kill on the Joy. So it's just going to be a very passive game. Thing is, I'm, I'm not sure who actually gets more value out of this slow roll game. Because if you do Red Giants utilize a slow game to slow tempo to siege like this, it's going to be great for them. But if RSG are able to do the same thing better, then it's going to be really bad. You can see right now Goja is just zoning in the back as the turret is being taken out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, whoa, my goodness, that's a lot of damage. First blood, the Petrify connects though, and it's a good trade over. You do Red Giants, they trade in the XP for the mid lane. All right, already a one for one trade here. RSG, once again, not too much of a gold end gauge, but Pancake. Baiting out the time journey is going to be good. Light still has the flicker. Irad wants to go back in. Good Thorn Rose, but he's going to be brought back with the reverse time. And Iman is doing what Super Red has been doing to him the entire game, trying to freeze it up now. And it's going according to plan, right? Because initially we thought that it would really be really bad for Iman, but how things are going, they're actually at the same level lead. So he's not too far behind. And I was quite interested with the fact that Zakuti actually opted for the Kadita. I thought there would be more pickoffs on the board. But look at this. Oh, okay. I guess there's attempts. Oh, Jikundo. Good one. Rough waves connects, and he's able to escape. Both teams have so much disengage to play with. They have anti CCs across the board, and again, they're just trading really well at this point. The gold lead is pretty insignificant. Super fun though to watch, right? They're all waiting for that item power spike, but Pancake! He's gonna be pinned down now. Light has the way the dragon doesn't even need it. Just picks up the kill with a good kick in. Aqua is trying to pinch super red. He does still have the go away. 
but I don't think RSG can dive. Oh, they're going. Look at Light, look at Aqua. RSG, they already have a 1,700 gold lead, right? The way that they were able to rotate, the way that they were able to get a pick onto Pancake even, actually propels that gold lead a little bit further ahead. But look at this, Seikis. He's been trading really well, right? Because they saw and had the information that RSG Philippines wanted to put pressure in the top side. And so he was very quick to respond with that turtle take in the bottom lane. But there you go. A turret falls to Yuru Red Giants. They're trading really, really well. Yeah, with the Marksman and the Bane, they understand that the Siege comp for them is going to be really good. So they're already threatening that. The fact that also the turtles have gone pretty equally for both teams is pretty beneficial for Yudu Red Giants. They're waiting on the power spike to hit for the Melissa. He's already on the Corrosion side, building to the DHS, and then later on the Golden Snappers. You see a little bit of a trade in lane. Super A gonna be dove by Nats. Time journey forced out. Nats still going, forcing what? the go away, but Nats is gonna fall. And wow, I mean, he does get a turret for it, but I don't know if that's worth it. Well, I guess you can say that turret is permanent damage, right? But Sure, it does get traded back. I feel like RSG Philippines are trying to look for more objective trades on the board. And looking at this, 85% for RSG Philippines. I wonder why, right? I Only think a 1,400 gold lead. I feel like structures are quite equal. Even objective takes, right? One-to-one -one in Turtle as well. Mm -hmm. But on paper, RSG Peach are just, I would say, the better team, right? I mean, the predictions from the people out there. Light now with Weighted Dragon. Could Vengeance pop to just deny the damage? But with the Rough Waves, I don't think you're gonna survive that one. Go just gets picked off, and it should be a turret for RSG. But you do red giants. This is why they're the giants here. They want to keep on trading. They're not going to let the enemy team just stomp them in. It's the first time a rad will be able to trade it back. Nats has three HP bars, but that's what the Melissa is built for. Once you're in there, Nats falls again. Zach QT picks up the kill, but it's gonna be a tier two turret as no early way. as the seventh minute. No way do they get it. No way. Light goes in. I think oh. they can. There's a few more hits here. It might be. They'll just go on to light. What? Now with a dash forward. Aqua cannot defend all alone. They can wait for another minion wave as Gorgeous clears out the wave. So it's not going to be a trade tier two. Up top, it's Yudu Red Giants with a big win. Yeah, but the lanes are still pushing there in the bottom lane. Mm -hmm. They get the mid on top of it as well. Winions, Winions. Wow, no, no. Yudu Red Giants are playing their mobility a lot faster. They're rotating a lot quicker than RSGPH, and that 1,800 gold lead has now shrunk to only 1.2k. And on top of that all, they have more kill pressure with Gojas already picking up that Holy Crystal as well. So more magic damage, even if RSG Philippines want to go for a split. At this point of the game, again, it's a very low kill game, I would say. We're just at like one kill per minute. And it all comes down to Super Red, I feel. Uh, this power spike, once it hits, especially considering the front line for RSGPH, Nats has died two times. He doesn't have enough oh, tanky items. Pancake is really getting chunked really low. He has to be forced to use a time journey, but Nats will just scratch him down. Deadly catch coming in. Super Red trying to peel. He doesn't pop the go away to save his roamer. Go just to the back, though, now with a vengeance as well. And Mon will be taken out. Zek is still trying to dish out damage. Zach UT gets out for the massive execution. Goes through the go away. Super Red still with a double kill. And now Iran is all left isolated by the likes of Yudu Red Giants. Now Super Red jumps forward. Nats with his HP Thunderclap back. And it's a kill back and a shutdown for Nats. But once again, it's Yudu Red Giants who get much better value. Yeah, that was a 3 4 4 trade, and they get Amon as well, right? The person that you're supposed to rely on to the damage, the person that you'd expect to farm as quick as possible to get that power spike as soon as possible. And this is it. Zero gold difference, only 200. At this point, it barely makes a difference. And with four members taken down, the Yudu Red Giants very quick on the Lord. Let's see. Oh, he got knocked out. Wait, the dragon as well. They have a chance to steal this thing. Oh, no way! He finds the kill on the Lord, secures it for RSGPH, all on the back of Light's Way of the Dragon. That's so unfair. That's so unfair. That's so unfortunate for the Yudu Red Giants. Come on. Oh, they man. had it in the back. They had the better setup. They we're outnumbered, and Amana goes in, still able to get the Lord off of the backs of the other members setting up. And that's an instant 2,500 gold lead off one play. Oh, that's so unfortunate for you two red giants, but it was massive for RSG. Light, again, is giving the vision. You know, RSGPH mo motto has been uh -huh. follow the light oh. for a long time, and that's exactly what happened there. Light showed them 
where he was. The end and of the then, tunnel. The end of the tunnel. There's always light. He's just standing there with his glorious hair. Oh, Nas, very aggressive onto Pancake. That's a lot of damage, man. But the time journey gets him out. Nas is going to be chunked quite low with Aqua. But the Lord here shouldn't really be a big threat to you, the Red Giants. It just takes out the Tier 2 and the Tier 1 in the mid lane. It's still all good if they can defend this. And they're doing a really good job in micromanaging the waves. Now with the rhythms as well, Gojes is able to just clear out that mid lane. 3,500 gold lead in. Oh, who got the... It's your ad, bro. Oh, light now with the Jeet Kune Do and the way the dragon. What is that damage? Zach UT got deleted as Zaman now. Pops in his Zaman oh, Force. No. A super ad. Now with the Inspire. Melts him down. Even with the Zaman Force. Now he's going to get chained down. The goalie oh. comes through with a thunderclap as well. Will be used. These gnats take it from him. Gorgeous running away. Phantom Execution. RSGPH with a massive team fight win. 3 4 1 trade, 3,700 gold lead, and they're taking all the buffs away. Gojes here trying to clear the wave as soon as possible to prevent any more from being traded back for the side of RSG Philippines. And you can see the look on LaFell's face. Okay, you can't like literally see it, but I'll describe it to you. He looks really worried. His eyebrows are scrunching. It looks like he's. Getting a little sweaty over there. But yeah, because, you know, it's unfortunate, right? I mean, let's take a look at this instant replay, right? The fact that they were able to play around this, right? Super Red was already really good. Being able to hit from the back. Iman goes down. That's already a win condition taken by Udo Red Giants. But look at Aqua, right? He goes in, flickers in, uses that ultimate, that burst potential as well, coming in from Irad. And that's it. A 3-4, what? What? One trade? Two trade? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I think... Yes, it was good position, good pickoffs from RSGPH, but it was a very, very big mistake by Super Red as well. Getting a bit too over aggressive, dashing forward on a Melissa. A very risky move, and it did not pay off at all. Uh, usually you would want to try to do that, but again, that was against a Masha, someone who can actually disarm you. And with Super Red completely disarmed, there was no way of fighting back. And again, for all the way from the start, we called it, it it's this Yudo Red Giants composition is built around the Melissa. And even here, right? Yudo Red Giants, even after suffering that really huge loss, they still want to try and contest this. It's worrisome because Irad is two levels ahead. That's a lot of damage, Iman, though. Pops in the Purify, gets out. No Zaman Force, no Purify. I think Yudo Red Giants won on that front with more resources to burn for this Lord fight. Oh, it looks like Gojis is looking for another tower there. That's all he can do at this point. Irad goes in, though. You can see the damage piling in. Oh, oh, what's that? QT going to be caught, but Light's going to be brought back by the reverse time. Good peel from Pancake. Could have been devastating to Yudu Red Giants. Now Gojis taking a... Wow, that's a lot of damage from just one <laughs> rotation from Aqua. Nath now jumping in. Time journey used. And that's it. Now RSG had the resource advantage. Uh-oh, uh-oh, it's not looking good here. Gojes already super low. I don't think they should commit onto this, honestly. Well, right now, he's waiting for the way to drag, and he wants to go and lock Gojes down. Sekis wants to jump forward despite it all now, and it's a retribution to secure it. Gojes falls in desperation to look for a miracle play. And RSGPH, they just wipe you to Red Giant's dreams. 3-0 right now. It's not looking too good. Super Red here picking up the scraps, trying to take... In Try to take away, but did Nats get... Oh yeah, my god, Nats got orange. the orange buff. RGPH are ruthless, man. That's why they, they even call their oh. fans uh, raiders, because that's exactly what they're doing here. They're raiding Yudu Red Giants' jungle like it's nothing. Super brutal. This is super brutal. 8,000 gold lead already in the 14th minute. The Lord already marching down in the top side. They do still have options to play around Super Red, but if Super Red gets taken out even before the team fight begins, then that's just GG. They don't have the damage yet. Deadly catch used up. Imando in the midst of it all right now. Is Iman for Super Red? Doing so much damage. But he gets bursted down as well. Aqua does the same amount in burst. Irad now right. with a BOD onto the back with a Thorn Rose. Gets cancelled out. Still able to disengage as the second base turret falls in the bottom lane. RGPH, they've cracked open. You do Red Giants' base. Iman, Iman, oh my god. Even without Iman, they are still able to put this much pressure onto the board. And to make things worse, we were screaming about the damage coming in from Aqua, right? Just the burst alone. And that was on Gojes. And now Aqua already built in that holy crystal. So there you go, right? Jeez. Just one spit. One spit. One spit onto Pancake brings him to 50% health. 
it's insane. Okay, I understand, right? Pancake built in damage, right? With the glowing one, divine glaive as well, and the enchanted talisman to make sure that he's able to spam those skills. Even then, right? Look at this! Oh, the Divine Glaive as well! Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They have a lot of damage to play with, but I'm more impressed with uh, the Chad Irad. He went for a Chad move here. Milfic Roar, War Axe, Endless Battle, and BOD. This ain't Utility Lance. This is <laughs> Damage Lance. This is Assassin Lance. He likes it when it hurts. Oh. All right, and there you go. And he's hurting a lot right now. Super Red Force used to go away. Irad, bit too much that he could chew, but he still buys the immortality. Even the winner, fast hands from Irad, but it still falls in the end. Nat jumps into the back line. Aqua doing the same thing now with the rhythm as well. But Aqua should fall. Roughway is brilliantly played. Light now dealing the damage. And that's it. When you kill some people from RSG, another head will come through. Sekis now getting scratched down by Nats, and he will not be able to survive this one. He gets solo killed. Zach QT, the only member left standing, but his bond force will take him out like he's nothing. Oh. RSGPH with a clean 2 0 sweep. Wow. RSG showing the world what they are made of showing what it means to be world class. And that was class that we saw in game number two. Game number one, it was in 18 minutes, right? Okay, sure, I understand what LaFell meant. But this was what, 14, 15 minutes? 